Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I thought I would do a quick video on my favourite rereads of 2019. So unlike my favourite books of 2019 video, I'm hoping this one will be fairly quick. I just have five books to talk to you about today, all of which I reread in 2019 and all of which I loved. Out of the many books that I read in 2019, about I think 14 of them were rereads um, and there are a few particular highlights that I did want to mention. So these are like my best rereading experiences of the year, rather than like my favourite novels that I happen to reread this year, if you see what I mean. like. Pride and Prejudice is on this list but it's number three. If I were to rank all of these books in how the order of which I love them, Pride and Prejudice would be number one, but there are some which I like had a particularly good rereading experience with this year, if that makes sense. And similarly like I reread Mansell Park this year, um, I love Mansell Park more than the first two books I'm going to talk about, but I know I love Mansell Park and I knew I loved Mansell Park going into it, um, whereas like sometimes you have a rereading experience where you're like oh I really love this book I'd forgotten that rather than just like yeah I love this book I still love it great so anyway at number five I have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and so The Picture of Dorian Gray is not my favourite thing by Oscar Wilde my favourite thing by Oscar Wilde is A Woman of No Importance which is one of his plays which I also reread this year but that was my third reading and I knew that I really really loved it whereas I hadn't read um, The Picture of Dorian Gray for about seven years um, and this time I also listened to it on audiobook which is a really lovely experience I listened to the audiobook narrated by Greg Wise um, and I would say that like I really think um, the picture of Dorian Gray, or just like Oscar Wilde in general, works really well on audiobook because he's so witty. Me and my fiance Nick also listened to this together, which was really nice, especially as this is one of his absolute favourite books, so that was really fun. We did a video on it together as well, which I will link down below if you want to go and have a watch of that. The picture of Dorian Gray, if you don't know, follows a young man called Dorian Gray, who at the beginning of the book has a portrait painted of him, and he kind of makes this kind of deal with the universe that the picture will age instead of him and that the marks of like sin will be shown on the portrait rather than him as he begins to lead a not very nice life. It is a fantastic book, I really really loved my reread, I feel like I got more out of it and I also feel like I blamed different characters to a different degree. Like I feel like the first time I read Picture of Dorian Gray I was so like oh Lord Henry is the worst and I hate him and he is blamed for everything. Whereas I feel like this time reading it I had a much more like complex view of the situations in the book. So yeah, really loved this one and it was a great reread. At number four I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Now this is not my favourite Austen by any means. Um, in fact before this year I would have always said that this is my least favourite novel by Jane Austen and that I didn't like it as much as her other novels um, by quite a long way. However, after this year, I would like to declare that it is my second least favourite Jane Austen and that I like Northanger Abbey less. Um, I reread both Northanger Abbey and Ten Sensibility this year. And it's not necessarily that I read Northanger Abbey and was like, oh, it wasn't that good, because it's Jane Austen and I love everything by Jane Austen hugely. But rereading Sense Sensibility this year, I got an appreciation for it that I've never really had before. This is the third time I've read it and both times I've read it before I've been like well this is okay but it's just not as good as other Jane Austen books. I still feel like Pride and Prejudice or Mantle Park or Persuasion or even Lady Susan are superior books to Sense Sensibility. I still love them more but actually I discovered a love for this book that I hadn't really realised I'd had before, um, which was really lovely. I listened to this on audiobook, I listened to the audiobook narrated by Rosamund Pike, it was amazing. I've just realised that four out of five of my favourite rereads were things I listened to on audiobook, which I think tells you something about how much I love using audiobooks for rereads. Um, but anyway, I really enjoyed this listening of Sense Sensibility and I feel like I gained a greater appreciation of it as a book and a greater appreciation of the characters and a greater sense of what this book is about to a certain extent. So Sin Sensibility follows two sisters, they live with their mother and their younger sister um, and at the beginning of the book their father has passed away um, and they are kind of ousted from the house they have grown up in. They don't have any money because all of the money has gone to their half brother who is older than them. They have to live in a cottage and kind of start a new life and we follow the romantic relationships of the two girls as well as their relationships with each other. They have very very different characters, Eleanor is all sense and Marianne is all sensibility and emotion. Usually the reason why I say I don't love Sin Sensibility is because I don't think the romantic relationships are as satisfying as in something like Pride and Prejudice. But then again, when I think about it again, like 
One of the reasons why a lot of people don't love Mansfield Park is because the romantic relationship isn't that satisfying. But I love Mansfield Park for all of the other things that are in that book, but it had never really occurred to me to love Sense and Sensibility for all of the other things that are in this book. And actually the way this book looks at class, and the way this book looks at um, change in social position, and the way this book looks at family and sibling relationships is wonderful. Not just the relationships between the two sisters, Eleanor and Marianne, but also the kind of like surrogate brother relationships they have with the other one's love interests, um, which is something I never picked up on before, but it's actually something I really enjoyed in this book. So this was a great reread of Sense and Sensibility. It was really nice to reread it and discover that I do love it, even just if not quite as much as some other Jane Austens. But there we go. And number three, I have Pride and Prejudice. I reread Pride and Prejudice again this year, probably for the tenth time. I think it was the tenth time, might have been the ninth. I love Pride and Prejudice a lot. It's not that I had a particularly special reading of Pride and Prejudice this year, it's just that every time I read it, I just love it so much. Um, and I did listen to a lot of it on a plane, and so I would like fall asleep slightly while on the plane overnight, and then I'd wake up again and be like, oh I like this scene, I'll just go back and make sure I listen to the thing leading up to this, um, which is quite nice. There are many reasons why I love Pride and Prejudice. Um, I think it's an incredible novel. It tells the story of um, Elizabeth and Jane um, and their three sisters and their parents, the Bennett family. The estate on which they live is entailed on the male line, which means after Mr. Bennett's death, the girls will have nowhere to live and nowhere to go. So all of them are kind of banking on one of them making a good match who can help the others out in life. And we follow the romantic relationships of Jane and Lizzie. There are so many things I love about Pride and Prejudice. It is one of the most like comforting books I think. It just it really warms me and makes me happy and I just I just love it a lot. I think it has a wonderful plot, I think it has incredible wit, fantastic character development but also I just think because I love this book so much and because I've listened to it so much and because I've reread it so many times it just feels like coming home and reading Pride and Prejudice. I feel like how a lot of people feel about Harry Potter is how I feel about Pride and Prejudice. Um, I listened to this on audiobook, again the audiobook narrated by Rosamund Pike which is great and I would highly recommend. Um, another reason I think why I really love rereading Pride and Prejudice is that of my like favourite novels of all time it is probably the shortest one. Like if I want to reread Pride and Prejudice it's like a 12 hour audiobook whereas if I want to reread Our Mutual Friend it's like a 34 hour audiobook so you know, anyway. And number two, I have Bellman and Black by Diane Setfield. Um, this was a wonderful reread. This was the second time that I read this book, um, which is the second novel by one of my favourite authors. So Diane Setfield's first book, The Thirteenth Tale, is my favourite book. It's not a classic, my favourite contemporary novel of all time. Um, and I read this when it came out and I really enjoyed it. But my my main experience reading it the first time I read it was just that it wasn't the 30th tale and I just wanted another 30th tale basically um, and so I don't think I fully appreciated it as much as I could but I reread this in September in fact I hosted a read along of it so quite a lot of you guys read it with me which is really lovely and I loved this so much I think I fully appreciated it um, on its own merits um, it being a lot longer now um, since I first read the 30th tale and also having read Once Upon a River since which is Diane Setfield's third novel which in a way is a kind of like bridge between these two. Once Upon a River has quite a long common with both of them but this and The Thirteenth Tale don't have as much in common with each other as they do with Once Upon a River and Once Upon a River does with them. Anyway, I love this book a lot. It is a sort of ghost story. It tells the story of a man called William Bellman from his childhood right up until the very end of his life uh, which is the first thing we see and then we kind of flash back to his boyhood um, and he kind of starts off life in a small probably almost certainly Victorian village. Um, he works at this mill and he kind of develops this into this great business empire where he sets up this huge emporium of mourning wear. This book in many ways is about death and grief and the kind of way that death sort of haunts Will throughout his life um, and the way that he is kind of also haunted by this shady figure he meets in a cemetery one night who he calls Mr Black. It's a wonderful book, it's really compelling, fascinating, wonderful characterization, really wonderful pacing, it's very very different um, and I love it for that, like I think this moves through one person's life like really rapidly in such a clever way, um, kind of focusing on various points where Will loses people around him. It's so like haunting and creepy but all in a wonderful way and the character relationships in here are so good. Like I said, I love this a lot and I would highly recommend it and I really did find like a real new appreciation for this on this reread. Um, whereas before I think I'd really liked it but I just hadn't liked it as much as The Thirteenth Tale and then reading it this time I just realised what an incredible book it is on its own merit. But my favourite reread of the year was definitely my reread of Charles Dickens's Dombey and Son. Um, this I listened to on audiobook. 
I listened to the audiobook narrated by Owen Teal, which is 41 hours long, and every minute is worth it. This was incredible. I love this book so much. It is my second favourite Dickens after Our Mutual Friend, um, and it had been quite a few years since I'd read it, so I thought I would listen to the audiobook in October, and I started in October, finished in November, and just adored it. I love this book so much. It is a wonderful book with such like fully fledged characters, such like a fascinating exploration of Victorian gender and marriage and um, the position of women and um, business and like family relationships of grief and love and loss. I just love this book so much and listening to it on audiobook was such a joy because the audiobook is so good like I would highly highly recommend it the voices are incredible um and I don't know like there will never be another voice for Mr Toots now than the one Owen Teal does in this it's just spot on um and I, I loved it I loved it so much Dombey and Son tells the story um not of Mr Dombey and not of Mr Dombey's son but of Mr Dombey's daughter Florence um her father Mr Dombey owns this business Dombey and Son and that is all he cares about um, all he cares about is furthering his business so he is incredibly excited when at the beginning of the book he has a son born who is going to take over the business from him one day but he completely neglects and doesn't care about his daughter Florence who is six years older than his son Paul um, and this book kind of looks at Florence over the course of her life, her very strained relationship with her father who doesn't value her because of her gender um, and various other characters. Of course it being a Dickens and being like a thousand pages long there are a lot of subplots all coming together in a wonderful way. I love Dombey and Son a lot. I made a individual video specifically talking about gender within the Dombey and Son which I'll link down below um, and this was just such a wonderful reread. It's just such an amazing book and it had been so long since I read it it was just such a joy to be like oh yeah I really 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 love Dickens and just remind me how much I adore this author and why he is my favourite author. Also I was like really really busy at work and like quite stressed with lots of other stuff going on in life in October and November and just to be listening to this book that is like a cosy comfort blanket was just really really lovely and wonderful and I loved it a lot. <laughs> So there we have it, those are my top five rereads of 2019. Please let me know down in the comments if you reread much and if it's something you enjoy, um, and if so, what your favourite rereads of 2019 were. And that's all for today, but I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.